like all good system, all systems go. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Leonardo. Thank you, Maya. Thank you, Fernando. And thank you, I hope I can say that right. Jiao, Jiao. Is that how you say it? Feel free to unmute. <laughs> it's Julia. <laughs> oh, Julia. Okay. <laughs> That's easier. <laughs> yes. <laughs> very, very thank easy. You. Thank you. Thank you, Julia. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> I was way off. You're so kind, but I'm so way off. <laughs> I mean, no, no, no. That's okay. At least you put an effort. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I always try, but I might completely butcher it. So, so sorry. That's okay. okay. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so this is going to be a fun session for all of us. And um, just to kind of kick us off here, I always like to know kind of where you're coming from in the world. So if you can give me, you know, uh, just one word or city or a state or country or wherever you're coming in from. So I just kind of get a quick Brazil. Yes. Uh, awesome. Great. I love these Brazilians. Excellent. Excellent. Wow, Brazil in the house today. Um, North Carolina, thank you, Jessica. Great. All right, uh, I've got a lot to share with you guys. I spend quite a bit of time trying to just put this whole thing together because you know, in AI, we just have always a ton of stuff to learn. But I want to make it concise and uh, easy for you guys to digest, and also easy for you guys to implement and you know use all the time. So uh, we have some uh, quick rules here. Quick rules. Um, I know that we all made extra time to be here. So if you guys can just be friendly and collaborative, I know you guys already are, but I always just have to, you know, get it out there and um, also uh, be safe. Uh, if you're out there driving, then uh, just go ahead and listen in, but otherwise uh, camera on would be awesome. So I could kind of see you guys, if you guys uh, are in a place where you can turn your camera on. Um, and then lastly, just uh, sit back and relax. Uh, I see Jessica sitting there very relaxed um, and hope you guys can all take away from us uh, all the stuff that um, we're going to share today with our time together. And uh, by the way, you don't need to do anything. Uh, you can take notes if you want, but you don't have to. I'm going to give you all the slides. I'm going to give you everything you need. I'm going to give you a QR code at the end, be able to download the, all the slides and all the information uh, that you want. And also, uh, of course, this will be recorded, but also feel free to reach out to me if you guys want a recording and you want to reference it, you want to share it, you want to do whatever. It's totally good. This is all for you guys. Okay, so let's get started. Let me get my slides going. All right. Give me a two in the chat if you guys can all see my slide. Let me turn on my view here, spotlight, all this fun technical stuff. Spotlight, everyone. Okay, great. All good. All right, you are here because we want to unlock the power of AI language models. And so this is a very, very big topic because uh, everything right now in AI is based on language models. And you guys may have heard uh, some acronyms going out uh, called LLMs, and uh, it stands for large language models. And large, we mean, you know, billions of data sets. Okay, so it's extremely large. I don't think I can even wrap my head around what's, you know, billions of data sets kind of look like or think like. So that's why we need machines like AI to be able to um, digest all that stuff for us and only give us what we need at the moment that we need them. Okay, so uh, let's get started. Um, before we get started, of course, this is about me. If this is your first time with me, um, this is just a quick summary about me. Um, I worked as a, a tech executive for over 15 years prior to real estate and been in real estate sales for uh, at least the last eight plus years. Uh, I am a second generation realtor. And all that means is that my mom has been in real estate for over 35 years. And I was uh, fortunate enough to be exposed to all that stuff. She's bought a lot of um, uh, real estate herself as an investor and also as a realtor. And so I've uh, been fortunate to be part of that path. And then um, because of my background, I always love masterminding around sales, around business, and around tech. 
which, uh, which is the reason I'm here today. And all I want to do is just share ideas to help you guys grow, because uh, as you know, the future is AI. Um, everything that we touch and see and experience from here forward are all going to be AI. So um, it's best that uh, we can leverage it early and leverage it fast because things are changing very quickly. And as if the social media generation wasn't fast enough, this is going to be even faster and for, for good reasons, uh, because everything that we do is going to be assisted by AI. Okay. Uh, so our agenda for today. Okay. Um, I did a presentation almost a year ago about understanding chat GPT and understanding what large language model is. And we, it's very, very difficult for us to do anything without having an understanding of what it is that chat GPT um, is built for and how did it come about? Okay, because I'm gonna tell you a little bit of story about chat GPT and how that came about and how, how that even uh, applies to what's happening today. And secondly, I'm going to share a bunch of AI tools and a bunch of tips around not just ChatGPT, but other language models. Okay, and you guys are gonna get a really big eye opening regarding what's happening today and how things have progressed in just one short year. And also give you guys um, options, what you can use other than ChatGPT. Um, but also there's a lot of features in ChatGPT that we didn't have a year ago that's um, really progressed in a very, very, very quick, quick way. And anytime you think about something, you can actually go to ChatGPT and ask about it. And so I'm gonna give you a bunch of examples of those things, as well as plugins, as well as uh, features, um, and as well as how to use different things for different reasons, okay? And then when we're done with that, I wanna just get some quick reflection uh, from you guys and Q&A if you want, if we have time but I do have a lot to share and hopefully I can get through this quickly so that we can have that Q&A time together. And in the end, I'll give you all the resources, just like I said, the slides, the recording, uh, everything, and also give you some resources regarding how to reach me and also uh, any kind of tools and uh, resources that I can share with you will all be in those links and I share them in social media and also share them in an email to you. Okay, so if that all is good, uh, please give me a three in the chat that you are ready to go. And that way we can kind of get this show going. Good, all there, number three, three, anyone? <laughs> Great, all right, thank you so much. All right, so I wanna start off by just um, outlining this, okay? Think about uh, technology from the olden days you know, a pen and paper is only useful if you are literate, okay? If you are not literate, you can't read and write, okay? It's not useful. You can't use pen and paper, uh, pen and, pen and paper for only that one thing to be able to put your thoughts and communicate with someone else uh, that way. So it's only useful if you're literate. And everybody here is illiterate, of course. And a calculator is also only useful if you know math. Okay, what are all those numbers? If you do not know math, calculator is useless. Okay, and so you might be wondering, where am I going with this? Well, AI is only useful if you know what AI is. Okay, so what is ChatGPT? Well, very interestingly, um, I think most people don't know this, is that um, in 2017, Google researchers published this paper Okay, and they introduced this one concept. And this concept here is called the transformer. Okay, and you can see the paper here. And this is, it's very interesting. It says attention is all that you need. Okay, this is the basis of what transformer is, is the attention. Okay, and this kind of came out of all the social media. You guys know social media, all it wants is your attention. Your attention to read, attention to watch videos, attention to uh, collaborate or comment or like and all that stuff, that the machines want you, want your attention, okay? And they get that attention by giving you value, some sort of value, either entertainment value or any kind of value such as education or anything else. You guys know this because all you're trying to do in social media is give education out so that you can get more attention. So that's what the transformer is, okay? 
And so when they introduced this, a very uh, interesting happened. Now, by the way, you might be thinking, oh, what's, what's a transformer? Transformer is not a robot, like, a, like transformer, you know that in the movie, but actually a transformer is this, is a network, okay? A transformer is a neural network. That means there's a specific logic of things that happens and it creates, you can see right here, um, oops, let me draw for you. Right here, there's an input, okay? And then there's an output, okay? So machines will do all of these things for you if you give it some input, and that's what a transformer is. And you can see right down here, the transformer architecture, okay? This is the basis of everything, all right? So this has fundamentally changed everything about our relationship to information, okay? Instead, instead of us searching on Google for information, Google or AI is actually searching us because it wants our attention, it wants our data, and if they can give us the data that we uh, it predicts that we want, then we will give it attention. And if we give it attention, that means we're gonna type in, we're gonna uh, correspond, we're going to uh, uh, respond to it, and when we respond to it, it gets more data and it can predict even more. Okay, so think of it this way. This is AI at the top, and there's me and you, okay? So what we all do here is we give AI some input, some information or ask for something, okay? And then it takes it into the transformer, the large language model, the LLM, and then it does something to it, okay? To give us a response. And when it gives us response, it recognizes what that request is, summarizes it for us, translates it for us and predict what it is that we want and then generate some sort of a response in the form of text. Okay, so uh, this is all pretty self-explanatory, but there's a reason for this. Okay, once you do this, you can see the large langu language model gets bigger. Okay, so within one year, billions and billions of data has already been fed into AI on top of billions and billions of data that has already been trained on. Okay, so it's a self-training system. Okay, and so you can see this is what a GPT looks like. It's going to create, it's going to create some, it's going to have some data. Now it's going to take that data, do something with it, and figure it out and curate it. And then it's going to put into this training. And then it's going to adopt that training and then give all that information to us. Okay. So it's a very, very complicated system and it requires a lot of data. This is why it's called the GPT, the generative pre-trained transformer. Generative means it's going to give you output. Pre-trained, meaning it's got a lot of data that you already given it to be trained on. And then transformer, as we mentioned earlier, is a neural network. So this allows it to predict and generate data for us. Okay, and because of this, trillions and trillions of pieces of data has been collected about us. Okay, and because of that, it's going to predict the key word here is going to predict what we want. Okay, now you might be thinking, okay, it's predicting stuff, great. If I type something in, it's gonna predict something back. In the future, what it's gonna do is gonna predict what you're gonna buy, when you're gonna eat, when you're gonna exercise, when you wanna do something, and it can offer it to you and give you a suggestion on top of that. Okay, so this is a good, this is a good example that the machines are searching us and not us searching for information from, say, Google, okay?
And you guys might know that there's devices now, you know, and even iPhones have already been tracking all the stuff that we do. This is all so that we can predict what it is that we want and give it to us before we actually want it. And so this is what we're moving into. An in internet era, this is before. And now this is us. What does this mean? This means it's gonna do all of these tasks for us. It's gonna predict what we want and can do all of these things with us. And you can see down the list, can book restaurant appointments, it can add events to our calendar. It's going to book our flight tickets for us, give us recommendations, make to-do lists for us, make phone calls. And if you're in real estate, you know, making to-do lists and making phone calls is very difficult. We have to do it every single day. It gets tiresome. And so machines are going to be able to do that for us. Schedule meeting for us. This is a big one, right? Shop online. Some people might like that if we shop a lot and uh, order groceries, it's things that we need to do every single day. Okay, so in order for us to get what we need from this robot, we need to know how to talk to it. So that's what we call chat GPT prompt engineering. Engineering just means that, hey, you're just trying to come up with ways to be able to tell chat GPT what it is that you want. And it's pretty simple. As long as you know the model, as long as you know the framework, okay? Think of it this way. If you have a scissor, a pair of scissors, you only need two things to be able to cut something, right? So the top part of the scissors, you're number one, and the bottom part is number two, okay? You have two parts. And so for chat GPT, for AI, the first part is doing the thinking for you. Cognition means thinking. And that's what ChatGPT is good for. It does the thinking for us. But in order to do that, we have to give it the context right here. And the context is just information, okay? Information of what we want it to do for us, to do the thinking for us, okay? So think of it in two parts. I'm going to give it some information about what's happening, what do I need? And then it's gonna do some thinking for us. And when it can do that, the tool works, okay? Then this works, okay? I'm gonna break this down for you in very easy, uh, easy five step, as far as how to give it information that it really needs to do the best job for you. So this is what's called the perfect prom recipe. And so I'm gonna go through these one by one for you so that you have a good understanding of it. But once you go through this, you should, should be able to easily remember this every time you're interacting with the AI system, okay? So number one, it wants to know, what goals do you have? What, it is, what is it that you are trying to do? What's the outcome that you are trying to get in the end, okay? So uh, for example, the outcome is I get to buy a home. The outcome is I have groceries to eat tonight. The outcome is um, I have a blog post that I can send out and uh, written for me to all of my audience. So define the goals and the outcome. Number two, style. Okay, if you want to write something, if you want AI to reply to you in a certain way or in a certain style, then you need to tell it. I want you to tell it to me in a style of a professional. Okay, I want you to be courteous and be a professional. Or, hey, I just want you to reply to me like I'm your best friend. Okay, that's a form of style. So you want to tell it what style you want the information back to you as. Okay, otherwise, it's just going to, you know, guess maybe what kind of style you want. Okay, third, the format. What kind of format do you want the information back to you as? Uh, one that I use all the time is, hey, give me a number list, a 10-point number list. Give me a highlighted list. Uh, give me a number list or give me a bullet point list. Uh, give it to me in a table. Give it to me in a chart. Give it to me in a pie chart, for example, right? Or give it to me in a bullet list. Okay. It wants to know how do you want the information. 
Okay. Now, number four, in case you didn't know, you get to restrict the information you want, meaning um, I want it to be a thousand words. Okay. That's an example of what I want. Hey, just tell it to me in one sentence. Okay. That restricts it so that it gives it to you in the size of the information that you want. And the last part, and probably the most important part, is to review your results and then tell it again. If it's not exactly what you want, then ask it again in a different way. Ask it again for a different style, right? And so this will allow you to be able to talk with the AI system better and better and better. Okay, so if you can follow all of these five steps every time you pull up ChatGPT to do it, you'll be able to get precisely your uh, answer that you want for everything, okay? So I'm just gonna quick take a quick pause. You guys think that you could use this formula to be able to use ChatGPT from now on so that you don't have to? Trying to think of like, oh, what should I tell ChatGPT today? How, how should I tell it what I want? Is this helpful? Just give me a yes in the chat if that's helpful to you to be able to kind of break things down this, this way. Good, awesome, awesome. Thanks, Pamela. Okay, so what can you do with the system? Well, the ideas can be limitless, but if you're just starting using the system, then we wanna know, hey, we wanna be able to brainstorm. We wanna create a marketing plan. We want to uh, write marketing materials. Uh, we wanna write a job description if you're looking for a job. You wanna write a love note. This is a good one. So it can be personal, it can be professional, it can be business, it can be anything that you're trying to do in your life, okay? Whether it's for your work or uh, for yourself personally, uh, at the end of the day, it's just up to you, your creativity to be able to come up with ways uh, to be able to utilize the system because it's really wide open. Okay, I shared this uh, before and I'll share this again uh, for a good reason because you know that right now, ChatGPT, when you give it text, it gives you a text reply back. But you also know that if you give it text, it's possible to give it a voice back, okay? And if you give it text, maybe it can give you an image back as a result. So it doesn't have to be just text to text. It could be text to voice, text to image. And now, as you probably know, maybe you've seen in the news, that you can do text to video. You put in a text and it'll give you a video back of the result, okay? And then you can have a voice to voice conversation, which I will show you. Uh, a year ago when we did this, uh, we didn't necessarily have this voice to voice uh, experience and now we do, okay? And also a year ago, we didn't have the image to text experience and now we do. Okay, uh, we're not quite doing a lot of video to video. Okay, that may be conversations with a video chat bot uh, from video to video, and you can maybe see a, a video of the chat bot to be able to talk to it. You can do that, but it's not widely used at this moment. It probably will be used more and more. But the goal here is we get to a point, we can um, ask it anything, in text, in voice, in image, in video, in whatever form that you want, and it can give it back in whatever form that you want. And so we're rapidly reaching this point here where a lot of these things can be done. And of course, if you can ask anything to a robot, then robot can give it to you back, you know, make you dinner, organize your room, you know, do whatever when it can take over the physical world. Okay. Quick pause. Uh, yes, ChatGPT4. Actually, I'm going to show you some of those things today. Would that be cool? Is that something that you would like to do? We can do it together. Yes. All right. So that's 
all about ChatGPT. I want to make sure you guys get an understanding, a basic fundamental understanding of ChatGPT. Um, if this all works, this is our next step. Okay. I'm going to share with you these nine things that you guys can use and experience today. And I'm going to actually demo that for you. Okay. So first thing, this is number one. Uh, how many of you have heard of Claude AI? Just give me a, a C, the letter C, if you've heard of Claude AI. No. Good. Awesome. No. Awesome. Great. Okay. So I'm going to share my screen here and let's go through it. One second. Find my window here. All right. Here we go. You can all see my screen all right? Hopefully. Okay. Make sure I can see your chat here. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Fernanda, Jessica. Thanks, Pamela. Thanks, Maya. All right, all right. So this is ChatGPT4. You guys are all familiar with this, hopefully, right? You guys have all been using it, everybody? Yes, thumbs up. Yeah, yeah, are you with me? Are you with me? Good, great, okay. So you can see, you can put in a, a question and then you can get something back, all right? Um, this is Claude, same thing, okay? You can ask it whatever you like. Okay, you can see my chat history down here. Okay, so right here, I said translate a real estate buyer questionnaire. And so here's a questionnaire and say, fill out an example. Okay, so you can see it works just like ChatGPT. And so you might be wondering, well, why would I use this instead of ChatGPT? Well, sometimes ChatGPT is down. Sometimes ChatGPT is too busy. Have you guys all experienced that sometimes? Like, and try to get on ChatGPT and you can. All right, so make sure you have an alternative and Claude is probably the best second alternative you can have. And I would argue that it may be your first alternative sometime to use um, because it's, um, I think it just, it just feels like it works a lot smoother. Okay, um, but everything that you can do in ChatGPT, you can do here in Claude. Okay, so uh, the URL is Claude AI. So be sure you can, and it's free. Okay, there's a paid version too, but the free one can do everything that you wanted to do. All right, and here's a quick comparison between ChatGPT and Claude. Okay, you can see right here, ChatGPT4. And you can see just recently, Claude had released the version three and overall it's beating ChatGPT4 in some cases. So just slightly better knowledge, much better reasoning, better grade school math, okay, and better math problem solving. You can see in all the categories, it's done better than ChatGPT4, okay? So I will say that ChatGPT4, uh, at the end of this webinar, you'll be able to see that ChatGPT4 actually has a lot of functionalities and feature that you may want to use that Claude may not have. For example, ChatGPT4 has plugins and has um, what they call GPTs, which are custom GPTs that people can use. Think of it as like an app store. Okay, so you can use specific ones for specific reasons where Claude doesn't necessarily have that kind of custom ChatGPTs or plugins. Okay, so that's something that's of difference. But as far as the regular reasoning, and how smart it is, it's actually a little smarter than ChatGPT4 at the moment. Okay, so you guys would all 
who made this? It's called Anthropic. So the company here is called, let me see if I can find it for you. It's right here, Anthropic. So let me open one up. So this is Anthropic. They're an AI company and they built Claude. Okay. So you can see Claude, research, API, company. Okay, so Claude is made by Anthropic. Okay, great. So you guys think you guys can use that as a secondary AI tool? Give me a Claude, a C, a C if you want, if you uh, are gonna be able to use Claude. Great. Okay, next thing I wanna show you, I wanna give you one more alternative to uh, large language models. Okay, uh, this next one is called, great, awesome, awesome Maya. Sometimes I can't get ChatGPT to do something, so I go to Claude and Claude can actually do it. Okay, so it's really useful to have a second uh, option. All right, so third option here is actually completely different than ChatGPT and Claude. It's called Grok. Okay, give me, Give me a five in the chat if you guys heard of Grok before. And it's it's spelled G-R-O-Q. Okay, no one. Okay, this is all new to you guys. Awesome, I love it. All right, Grok. <laughs> Grok, okay, I'm just gonna pull this up so that you guys know what it is. So, you know, you can see here, ChatGPT, if I say, give me 20 real estate investment uh, ideas for business in detail. Okay, so if I ask something like this to ChatGPT, you know what happens. Okay. Look at, look at how ChatGPT responds. It writes it one letter at a time, uh, one, one line at a time. And you can see how it's processing because it's a very complex stuff that ChatGPT is trying to do. And so it takes time for, you, for it to actually give me all 20 of them that I asked for. Okay, Jessica, that's a good question. You said that it's Elon and actually Grok is not, is not Elon's product, okay? Elon's product is called Grok, G-R-O-C, not G-R-O-Q. So this is different than Elon's uh, large language model, okay? So you can see it's still working here. It's on number nine, it's on number 10, okay? All right, I'm gonna let that, <laughs> yeah, Jessica, no worries. No worries, I'm, I'm, I'm surprised you, you even know about Grok from Elon, which is G-R-O-C. All right, so you can see how long it's taking, right? It's taking about, I don't know, 45 seconds to a minute, and it's still going, all right? If I put this into Grok, right? Here's Grok. I'm going to put in the same prompt. I'm going to hit enter. Look what happens. It's all done. It gave me the 20 ideas in 1.39 seconds. So that's the difference. See how fast it is? Okay, let's do another one. Let's do Claude. Give me a long email explaining about, oh, good question, Jessica. I will answer that here in a sec. Give me, so I'm gonna do this prompt. Give me a long email explaining about how real estate sales works and give me full detailed process. So you can see, same thing. Claude is trying to write it. It's a little faster than ChatGPT. Okay, and I'll get the same prompt and I'll give it to Grok. All right, here we go, go. It's written everything in 1.57 seconds. Okay, so now write it in 2,000 words. Okay, now it does put you in queue. Once you're in queue, you're done. Look, it's written everything. This is a thousand words that it just wrote in, let's see, four seconds. End to end time, meaning it was in the, uh, in the, in the queue for a second. 
Okay, but it's still way faster than Claude, way faster than ChatGPT. So if I told ChatGPT the same thing that I just told Claude, I'm, I'm sorry, just told Grok, okay, now write it in 2000 words. If I give it to ChatGPT, okay, it's gonna go, 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 go. Okay, it's still going. And then if I tell Claude, same thing's gonna happen in 2000 words. Okay, so it's still going. This is still going. And if I do Grok, I say, give it to me, I'll say 3000 words. Okay, it does put you in the queue because it's still, it's still uh, kind of trying to make sure everybody's in the queue. But once it starts processing, it'll be done very quickly. Wow, this is probably the longest I ever waited. There it goes. See, once it processes, once you're, once you're up in the queue, you're done. Okay. It must be a little busy right now. So lots of people probably on it, but you see my queue here was shorter. Same 3000 words, did it in five seconds. Okay, we don't have timeline for these from ChatGPT and Claude, but I can guarantee you it's at least one minute or more. Okay, so that's the reason to use Claude is the speed. And why, why is it the faster? It's faster because it's using what's called an LPU. Okay, an LPU is like a GPU, like a, like a CPU, like a computer chip, okay? But that chip is specifically designed for language processing. So this is a language processing unit. That's what's called LPU. Okay, so this one, uh, uh, as far as how it compares to ChatGPT and Claude, that's a good question, um, but it would not compare in the sense that it is uh, it is using different language models. So if I click up here, you see the model. Hopefully you guys can see that in the upper left-hand corner. It's using open source models. These models are different than commercial models like ChatGPT and Claude. Okay, ChatGPT and Claude are closed models. These are open models. So this is open source. So right now it's using Mixtral. It can use Llama 2. Llama 2 is a uh, meta or Facebook uh, model. And Gemma is a, also another, another model. Okay, so it can use as different ones. But at the end of the day, it's different because you wanna use this if you want specific results regarding language. So how can the, what's, what's the best use, that, uh, use case for this so far is that you can use this model and use Grok and use this processing to be able to do voice-to-voice -voice chatbot conversations because it can process very quickly the language and it can talk back very quickly. So people are using this to access their voice chatbots to be able to talk back quickly. So for us, most of, most of our work right now is writing marketing materials, uh, writing blogs, writing social media uh, content and stuff like that. I would try using Grok for this because you can be able to research and have it write very quickly all this stuff. So basically I wrote, told it to write emails, stuff like that. This would be very fast. Okay, it wrote this in depth 3000 word email very quickly, okay? So if you want really, really quick responses, I'll tell you, I don't know about you guys, but after a while, I get really, really tired of waiting for ChatGP to, to write this stuff line by line, okay? So my point here is, I wanna give you guys options to be able to try for language models. ChatGPT, and if ChatGPT is down or not giving you the result, use Claude, which is very, very smart. Um, I'm, uh, I'm sorry, I don't know the exact comparison such as this between uh, Claude, ChatGPT, or Mistral, which is one of the language models that we used here, or Llama. You might be able to do a quick uh, Google and find out um, how smart it is. But I'm gonna tell you, all of these language models are gonna be 
uh, pretty close nowadays. As time goes on, they're going to be pretty close as far as how they do stuff and how they how smart they are. Okay, because everybody's competing with everybody else. Nobody wants to use a dumber uh, large language model. Okay, so I would definitely try that and see if you get better results and you get faster results back. Okay, yeah, that's right, Maya, I get really tired. I mean, it would take you a long time to try to research something on ChatGPT if you ask it for something and it takes, it takes it a couple of minutes to actually get it back. You remember back in the day when, before Google came out, there was Yahoo and there was uh, Excite and the other search engines, they were actually very slow. Google was the fastest, what, which is why it had the highest adoption rate. Okay, so... That's number one I wanted to show you. So let's check off our thing here. Okay, give me one second. All right, so that's Claude, we cover that. Check, two, Grok, check. Okay, so ChatGPT custom instructions. Who's Who has heard of, of doing custom instructions for ChatGPT? Give me a uh, T for ChatGPT if you've heard that. No? No? Okay, good. Very good. I'm glad I could share stuff with you guys. All right, let me find my thing here. Sick. <laughs> Thanks, Pamela. I just spend way too much time on all this stuff, but um, I still think it's very, very valuable so that I can uh, show you guys, give you guys a shortcut. You don't have to do all the research that I've done so that you guys can uh, learn some of this stuff very quickly in one short hour. Okay, so ChatGPT custom instructions. This is a custom instruction. So let me go back here and I'll show you where it is. So if you're in ChatGPT here, go down to your profile, you click profile, and you can click here, customize chat GPT. When you click that, you get these customized instructions, okay? So this feature goes along with what I was talking about earlier. It takes a really long time to work with chat GPT, asking it for something, trying to tell it stuff, and then have it give you response back. And all that takes a lot of time back and forth. Okay, so this is a shortcut. The shortcut is that you can give it a custom instruction. So if I click on here, it'll tell you, Okay, it's trying to learn a little bit about you. So where are you based? What do you do for work? What are your hobby interests? So that it can learn a little bit about you. Remember that the uh, prompt engineering that I mentioned earlier, it needs to know about you to be able to give you accurate results. So when you put this in here and you hit save, then that means every chat conversation you have, it knows who you are. You don't have to tell it every single time. Okay, and then how would you like ChatGPT to respond? So do you want it to be formal? Do you want it to be casual? Do you want a certain uh, kind of uh, instructions you want to give it that's going to be uh, automatic every time you chat with it? So these are shortcuts to be able to put in here, you know, as long as you want, so that you can have all of this stuff in here without having to go in and every time you have to tell it from scratch, again, who you are and um, what, you, what you want from it. Okay, so an example of this would be something like this. Okay, the custom instruction here is, uh, this is the company. Okay, we are a guide for business owners. We are tech savvies and we're entrepreneurs and marketers who want to implement artificial intelligence to boost the workflow and efficiency. So it knows what you do and it knows about your business and it knows uh, what kinds of things you want. You want SEO, you want tips and tricks, uh, you want uh, marketing automations, you want copywriting and you want awareness, you want email marketing. Okay, so now it knows who you are, and these are the type of things that you are targeting. Okay, and so down here, I say, how would you like ChatGPT to respond? I want it to respond like a journalist. Okay, this is the style. I want it to respond uh, to be long and thorough, so that means accurate. I don't want it to be short and shortcuts and leaving stuff out. And I want it to be concise and simple wording. I want it to be easy wording, easy to read. So if I were to save this, now everything that I talk about is going to be regarding this information that I have in here, okay? So I'm gonna say, give me 
10 marketing ideas for my business. So now it already knows my business. It already knows what I want. Now it's going to use those custom information to write what I want back. Okay, so this is basically a shortcut. So that you can, for you guys, if in real estate, then what you wanna do is you wanna put in custom instructions here that you're a real estate agent, what area you're, you're in, and what kind of tone and what kind of responses you want it to give back. And you just leave it like that so that you don't have to type it in every single time. Okay. Questions around that? Is that all kind of clear? Is, is that easy enough to understand so that you can shortcut that and not have to do that every single time? Because we're all in real estate, right? Cool. All right, next. Next, next. So let's see here. Custom instruction done. ChatGPT vision. Who knows that ChatGPT can use, can actually see? You guys know that? Yeah? All right. So first, I'm going to do something fun here. So there is this uh, plugin called Simpsonize Me. And I put in my photo. It reads it and then gives it back. Give me a cartoon version of me as a Simpson character. So you might be wondering sometimes to have profile pictures that are like cartoonized like that. So you can do that. You can make a cartoonize yourself. Okay. But ChatGPT vision basically is that if you give it a image, you can ask it what's in the image. So let's see, let me do an example here. I will drag in this image. Tell me what's in this photo. Okay, so now it's processing. It's gonna feed in this photo and it's gonna give me a description what's in it. This photo depicts a modern living room with well-lit cozy ambience. The room featured a large car caramel colored leather sofa. It even knew this was leather. That's cool. A thorn with various throw pillows. In front of the sofa is a round glass coffee table. So it knew that this was glass, which is pretty amazing. And it saw that there was a decoration orb and some books. There's hardwood floor, gives the room warmth dark gray wall, natural lighting streams from the large window. So that's everything that's in this room in detail. To the left, there's hanging ceiling, minimal pendant light with an exposed bulb. So it saw this light bulb right here. Okay, so this is useful because as you know, now you can feed ChatGPT images and it'll give you a description back. Okay. Do you guys know all know that it, it could do that? Okay, so you're gonna start once you realize that it can do these things. As you go about your day to day, you know, work and personal life, um, you can start to think like, oh, what can I use this for? Uh, can I get a description of this? So for those of you who are real estate agents, you could have a picture of this, and you can have you can have it write descriptions for you and you can put it in your photo descriptions for your listings, for example, okay? So those are all useful things, all right? Next is something that I really love, and I'm going to show it to you, is mobile voice. Do you guys all have um, ChatGPT on your phone? Give me a yes or no in the chat if you have. Yes, good, good. Do you guys talk to it? Just, no, okay. I will give you something one step further than just talking to it, okay? So I'm gonna share my phone here. Give me one second. 
All right, here's my phone live. There's my ChatGPT app. I'm gonna go to ChatGPT. Okay, and here's what I'm gonna do. Uh, I'm uh, short on time, so I'm gonna go through this quickly so that you guys can see. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and hit this little uh, headset icon, and it's gonna put me into voice. Hey, ChatGPT. No problem. Let's talk about real estate. Absolutely. Let's dive into real estate. This market is vast, encompassing everything from residential and commercial properties to real estate investment trusts, REITs, and property management. It's a sector that reflects the broader economy's health, influenced by factors such as interest rates, economic growth, and consumer confidence. For individual buyers and sellers, okay, the real estate market's dynamics can seem daunting. Okay, so now you are a experienced real estate agent with hundreds of transactions of homes sold. Talk to me about wanting to buy a home in Orange County, California, where the average home prices are $1.7 million. Do you understand? Navigating the Orange County, California real estate market with its average home price of $1.7 million requires a nuanced understanding of the local dynamics and a strategic approach to buying a home. Now, take me through the thought process of how, how I should strategically go through the buying journey, but I want you to have a back and forth conversation with me in a short response as if I'm the buyer of the home. Talk to me like a human with pauses. Certainly. Talk to me like a human with pauses and use sparingly the words ums and hums. And again, make your responses short like a human. Got it. So what's at the top of your list for your new home? Like, are we talking more about location or does the size of the house matter more to you? The, si the size of the home matters a lot. I want something at least 1,800 square feet with four bedrooms. And I want a large lot with a, a backyard and a front yard. All right, that gives us a good starting point. With those specifics, we'll probably be looking at certain neighborhoods where lots tend to be larger. Have you thought about which areas in Orange County you're drawn to? Some places might offer more space for your budget. Can you give me recommendations of cities in Orange County? Certainly. For the space and lot size you're looking for, you might consider areas like Mission Viejo or Lake Forest. These cities often have homes with larger lots. Tustin and Orange are also great options with a mix of older, spacious homes and newer constructions. Each of these areas has its unique charm and community feel, so it's about finding the right fit for your lifestyle. How do these options sound to you? I would like homes with no HOA. Can you find me some? Finding homes without an HOA can be a bit of a challenge in Orange County, but it's definitely possible especially in older neighborhoods or certain cities that have more traditionally developed areas. Cities like Orange, parts of Santa Ana, and some sections of Fullerton might have what you're looking for. These places often feature older, more established homes with no HOA restrictions. It might... Okay, so I wanted to give you a sample of how to do that, okay, so that you guys can actually do it. So I actually do this in my car, and I just talk to it, like I'm talking to, talking to a passenger. So you can just go back and forth with it and you can get a lot of stuff done and you can also you know, uh, do a lot of research and stuff like that while you're driving. So is this kind of like how, how do you get that to speak ability again? Okay, uh, Pamela, you can see on, my, on the screen here, on the lower right-hand corner, there's like a headset icon. You just tap that and it'll put you in voice mode. Okay. Yes, but I think you can choose a, a, a ChatGPT three if you want. But I would just choose four. You see at the top, it's selected ChatGPT four.
Okay, good. All right, so we did that. Let's do some custom GPTs. We have, I have two minutes. <laughs> um, you know what? We're short on time here. I do want to share with all of this other stuff with you. So um, I don't want to make you late or anything. So, uh, but these are a few other things that we can do. Okay, there's some video stuff. There's some web browsing stuff. And then there's some custom uh, GPT stuff that we can do. Um, I might save that for next time to be able to squeeze in. So join me next time for that. And I want to thank all of you for coming. And here is how you, uh, you can join the mastermind. Okay. And then be able to DM me, or you can also, uh, go ahead and uh, I'm on social media at Leo Chen RE, or if you're on workplace, you're a real estate agent, uh, at real, just go ahead and uh, DM me. Um, if you want all of the slides and all the information, but I really want to get through some of these stuff for us next time. Okay. All right. Hope this was helpful. Thank you all for being here. Uh, we all got another webinar to go to, so we will see you around. Thank you. Take care, everybody.